Hello and welcome. I have some special pots today for a special occasion. Uh, as you might have seen from my website, I'm getting ready to go to New York City in a couple of days. I'll be there this weekend. And all of the pots, the nine or ten that I'm be showing you, are brand new and will be shown for the first time at my little mini show in New York City. I'm hoping that you'll be able to join me in person. I sent out a number of invitations which folks may have, but if that's not possible, all of the pieces will be available on the website and we've made this video to make them easier to be accessed and understood. And as always, you can always call me and get in touch with me via, via, the, via the website mechanism and I will be very happy to talk, to talk you through it and give you the kind of personal attention that uh, is the reason that we do what we do. Uh, the first pot that I'm going to show you, I'm calling Carnival. It's a beautiful, brightly colored pot. Every color in the rainbow. It's very abstract, but there are ultraviolet blue, streamers of yellow, streamers of red, bright green. It looks for all the world like a, like a, like a passing parade or a carnival coming through. And if you want a pot in every color in the rainbow that I can possibly make, but yet is very melodious, this is a wonderful pot for you to have. It, uh, it, it, the, the, the surface is a sort of is a silken mat. There are iridescent touches throughout those sort of rising flotsam of, uh, of gold, rays of color, brilliant scarlet red. A lot of action in this little pot. Very nice thing to have. Now, second example. Uh, this one I've been, this is a titled work also. This is called Swirling Flames. I've, I mean, those of you who know me for a long time know I love, I love paradoxes or little dichotomies in the pottery and I often do things like frost and fire or something. I like dualities that, that, that can't exist, can't exist in the material world so easily. And this is one of those examples. I've gotten, the, 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 through the magic of the kiln, uh, there's, there's an orange, a yellow orange on this pot in a stylized flame that for all the, I mean, is, is almost as bright as a real flame. It's, extre it's as bright an orange as I could ever achieve on a pot. It's swirling up through sort of stylized blue smoke, iridescent trails coming down it, a volcanic, volcanic overglaze also showing uh, the, re the very, very sort of uh, stylized representation of, of, uh, of, of smoke of smoke flames rising. It's a very powerful bottle of a pot. It's a fairly good size too. I'm looking at it, it looks maybe eight or nine inches tall. It's got a lot of power and potent, and this isn't something you're gonna be able to buy at Pottery Barn. You know, by the by, I mean, I, I suspect that those who are with me for a while understand this, but it, it deserves reiterating every now and again. Every pot that I make is absolutely one of a kind. I am not the sort of potter that's, that's ever made multiples or series or editions, and I don't want to delve into that universe. I'm not a factory. There are no other, however skillful, hands in the mix of making the pottery. I've made all of these things myself with every little bit of every little bit of everything that I can give to them. And once gone, you're never going to get another opportunity at them. This is not. I, once the idea is completed to me, I don't have any desire to repeat it. It's not in the nature of how I work, and I want these things to be the very best I have to offer. This group is a very personal group. They're very potent. It's a strong group of pots. It's some of the finest I've had together in a while. I mean, the newest pots are always your... your they're, they're like my children. I mean, they're irreplaceable. Each one has its own special merits, and I give everything to them. I had a beautiful pot in the kiln the other day uh, that, that uh, cracked in the morning, another a large, important piece that hours and hours were spent on. And you do lose pieces occasionally like that, and it's a crying, it's a crying shame, but that shows how precious they are. They have everything, everything, in a, everything in a bag of chips goes into making these what they are. And this is, this is something that will just, you know, take over a shelf if you wanted to, or it might just integrate with other things that you have, but I like it a lot now. A lot of the, a number of the pots that I have here today, because it's a, it's a popular thing for me, is uh, celestial motifs. I am always watching nature documentaries, looking at images from the Hubble telescope, looking at ancient depictions of the sky. It's a constant source of inspiration to me, and why shouldn't it? These are times to, these are times when we have access to things that are just extraordinary scientifically, and I want to utilize every piece of new inspiration that, that comes my way. And I can sit for hours and hours watching these documentaries and I try to sort of distill them in my mind and turn them into something concrete. 
This piece is entitled Exploding Stars, and I think it's fairly evident. It's a beautiful, rich, dark blue, iridescent matte. Stars are ranging from a bright emerald green to a blue green to a turquoise. And there's sort of star clusters coming off almost in a, no, in a nova, some new, new stars being born. I mean, obviously very stylized. Stars don't have all these points in nature, but it looks like what I wanted it to do. They're almost like little meteorites all coming up. It's flying in every direction. It's a beautiful, beautiful pot. A lot of work went into this. There are hundreds of individual stars laid on here one at a time during the making of the, pro making of the pot, and it was, it was not a small task sort of the beginning of a new set of experiments I've been doing, and I'm very happy with the results of the piece, and I hope that you will be as well. That's something I sort of like this for the, I don't know, the, the, um, the, the, con the contrast of the thing or the extremity of the thing. This pot I've referred to as universal energy, and it's based loosely on a diagram that I saw, which uh, where some recent uh, some recent scientific study had been done uh, uh, describing the, the distribution of energy or radiation in the universe. And effectively, this depicts the entire universe, and it sits in the palm of my hands. And there's something very sort of uh, <laughs> there's something funny about being able to do that. I mean, I've got the entire, there's a sort of a, a radiation belt on the center of this with a gold, golden overlay. And then stars or concentrations of you know, helium or hydrogen or whatever they may be. I'm not that much of a scientist. I just like it. I'm a layman who uses it for aesthetic purposes. I don't claim any scientific background. But if you want the whole universe in your hands to sit on your shelf, sort of like a moat in God's eye, every little bit. And here it is for your use, interest, and delectation. And the final pot of these first is another beautiful stylized, you call it, it's, it's, uh, this is sort of loosely based on the American flag, obviously. You can see there are stars coming from, uh, from, from, uh, from turquoise through a bright saffron yellow all the way down back into a turquoise again, and there's beautiful scarlet and magenta red iridescence overall and a golden flow. I've called this piece um, Banner in the Sky, which is a title which I've uh, appropriated from the, 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 great, uh, the great American painter Frederick Church. There's a famous painting that he did in the post-Civil War era by that same title, which uh, effectively has a sunset sort of mutating into the... It looks, it looks for all the world like an American flag. It's very sentimental but very beautiful, and Church's work is something that I much admire, and he's an artist of, of, the, of the first order. And if I can occasionally borrow something from somewhere that, uh, somewhere, somewhere meritorious, I'd like, to, I'd like to take use of it. It's a little homage to him. I like the idea of it being, looking, looking like something really existing in nature, but yet more, for all the world, it looks like a flag, and there's every color of blue and turquoise in here you could possibly want. It is a very nice piece. It's a good size piece, too. Never the same from any side. A lot of color, a lot of power. And I hope perhaps you like it. Well, we're going, we're going to stop for just a moment and change up to the next group of, the next uh, little group of pots so that we can complete our videotape, but uh, hopefully you like these first five. Uh, welcome back. We're going to conclude with the uh, remaining four pots of this group, uh, which I'd like to show you now. Another beautiful pot. Part of these new new sort of series of iridescent matte pieces, which I've been making with a lot of with a lot of extra sort of layers of layers of color and design, this piece is covered w with do a couple of dozen of beautiful orange umber crescent moons. I don't have any any particular mind's eye notion with the piece. It's just something that's it's something I I see sort of celestial fantasies. So the the, the world the world's pulsing with life inside outside upside down, and I just just looking up looking up at the sky and, and, and putting it back through an artist's mind. I can't even always explain what it is I'm up to, but just somehow crescent moons, moons dancing in a blue field seemed to be something that needed to be done. Uh, there's an there's an overall iridescence, and this piece has a beautiful vellum kind of quality to it. It's sort of an egg shape. It's a very very nice pot. There's most beautiful ultraviolet blue iridescence coming up up off of it. Something very personal about it. Hopefully it would be personal for you as well. Now another fine piece. 
Michigan's very beautiful in winter, and it's it's a it's a time it's sort of a stark beauty that is to be is to be appreciated. It's been a very there's been a lot of very beautiful, clear, bright days, and this is the time of year where the sun sets available to us. My new studio where I live in the, the Lake District where I'm where I'm where I'm at, we we're blessed with very long long views of the sky, beautiful mature trees, and this is a this pot is entitled Winter Sunset. It should be apparent this this is exactly what I saw one day when out when out walking as the sun was going down with the with the with the bright with the bright red burning up between the trees and then blue night coming down falling upon it, these beautiful patterns of the of the of the tre of the trees and the tangle of the tangle of branches coming up through through and inside. There are several layers of uh, of uh, of color and glaze in order to achieve the the pattern of the trees overlapping one to another. It goes from a, from a true dark onyx black up to a volcanic glaze that has iridescent touches overall and to me this really felt and looked like what it was I was trying to depict. This is a very sort of homage within the to, to the arts and to the arts and crafts movement. No copy of course, but it's a very personal piece, but you know, if 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 the uh, natural forms are to your to your taste, this is a very accurate depiction of what it was I saw that day. And it's a very elegant pot. It's a good size piece too. Another for a, a more dramatic manifestation of nature. Although I can't claim to have ever witnessed one in person, with my fascination in things celestial and things natural, it makes sense that the aurora borealis is something I'm going to have to one day get to a place where I can see. Michigan's almost northwards enough to manage it. I'm told that you can see an aurora here maybe once every ten years, but I've never managed to do it. So a piece where I've done a true depiction of what, a, what an aurora might look like hanging over a, hanging over a, um, an Arctic, Arctic sky or near Arctic sky. They're actual, actual painted, uh, painted pine trees and conifers standing bare for the season. And yes, I know conifers don't lose their branches. I mean, don't lose their leaves at the end of the season, but they're, they're a little bare than they might be otherwise. I'm not that, I'm not that tuned out to horticulture. But the, the, there's an entire iridescent aurora in brightest green and, irid and, and iridized turquoise touched with iridescent gold at the top, an iridescent matte blue sky with all the stars hanging over top side, and down at the bottom completing in a snow-covered ground that's, that, that, has sort of a vi that has a violet reflection from the, from the night sky. Very pretty pot. I'm very proud of this. You're going to be seeing more landscape pots of this nature and what I'm doing. Things are a little more representational again. It seems to be my muse at the moment and I'm kind of going with that. I've been influenced by things like arts and crafts, woodblock prints, and uh, Japanese art, and things. I, I've been I've been digging into the, into the deepest depths of my library, and this is this is one that that really taps into something very warm and personal. And fine, finally, a major major pot, in all humility, an important piece. I'm titling this piece "Crystal and Delight," which is uh, lifted from an Edgar Allan Poe poem, "The Bells." Uh, you can look it up. It's a, it's a beautiful stanza. I won't. I won't. Uh, I won't embarrass myself by trying to quote, trying to do quotations from it. But uh, it seemed to be an appropriate title. Boy, there's a lot of work in this piece. Little cutouts and and, and and masks and difficult things, layers upon layers. And I think you can see in an ir iridescent lemon saffron fire yellow hanging against a dark blue sky. Our snow crystals coming down. The piece is overall covered with a very, very bright, dense, thick volcanic glaze coming in between them, perhaps depicting frost or just, I, I just, just the movement of things coming through. I realize snowflakes aren't yellow, but it, it's not, this is an artistic representation. I, I was, it's taken, a, the idea is taken a little bit from Japanese textiles of the 19th, 18th centuries and the Japanese woodblock prints stylized ideas of what a, sh a snow snowflake should be as opposed to perhaps what it is. Something that, that is pulsing with nature even though it's freezing cold. I think things that are cold can burn just as much as things that are hot can. And this pot has got it all. It really did. Once in a while you get a piece that just does exactly what you wanted it to do and then exceeds, it's, exceeds it a little bit by the magic of the kiln and this is one such piece. And for somebody that's been sort of holding their breath to possess a major piece of my work, an investment quality piece, this, this is something that you really should contemplate. Well, I think that will conclude our 
offerings today. I hope that you will be it will be possible for you to come by or take part with our take part in our show in New York City this weekend. It would be delightful to see you. I am willing to make special arrangements for people. You're not bothering me if you call. In fact, I'd be very happy if you will because uh, I'm rather I'm 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 not I'm not tethered to anything. I've got a lot of mobility and I'm always happy to try to take care of my customers in as personal a way as I can. So perhaps we'll see you, and otherwise, Happy New Year to you all, and uh, keep looking here for more pots because I'm working very diligently. Take care.